With 11,000 murders by handgun each year in this country, it is clear we have a real problem. But the question today is no longer what is the problem, the question is what is the solution. I'm Ted Williams, and welcome to A New Way TV. Remember, change starts with you. Joining us today to talk about America's problem with gun violence are two distinguished professors. Professor Ajeen Muhammad, who is also a juvenile probation officer, and Dr. Daniel Davis, who is a professor of African American studies in the City Colleges of Chicago. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome. So, America is one of four nations in the world with a constitutionally enshrined right to bear arms. Uh, among those, the other ones are Mexico, Guatemala, and Haiti, okay? Uh, we have about 300 million guns and about 300 million citizens in this country. Why do we have so many guns? Uh, you know, the, the, the gun thing is, is profit-driven. But the reason why I think we have more deaths than all of those is because we're also driven by fear. Okay. I've gone to those, some of those other countries you mentioned. You look at the news in those other countries, they barely mention the murder. We lead all our stories with the murder. We institute a sense of fear. Okay. All, all, of the citizens. all right. So, so fear is very important. And I agree. Um, I would say fear, accompanied by racism, mm -hmm. uh, you can't leave that out from two, three hundred, two hundred fifty years ago, right? We're going all the way back to the uh, since its inception, okay. slavery. And, uh, part of the motivation was to keep slaves under control or mm -hmm. the Negroes under control. Sure. And that is more to continue um, until okay. two thousand fifteen. Going back to the news. You don't just see crime on the news. You see usually black male faces okay. that are committing these crimes. So what do you do? Okay, so, so, so we're hopping in this race question already, Absolutely. which I'm fine with, okay? That's fine. That's how this goes. But I do want to ask this question because I find, and I have a pretty diverse set of friends, yeah. I find that my friends who are not African-American are fearful. I find that my friends who are African-American are fearful, too. My friends who are Latino are fearful. Everybody's afraid in this country. Right. And so is that a racial question? Is it a violence question? Is it a media question? Why is everyone so afraid? It's a capitalist question. And literally everything from when the phone is coming, we're mm -hmm. only going to make 600 phones. So everybody runs to the stores. And okay. those. We're only going to make 400 PlayStation 4s. Everybody runs to the stores. So we are driven by fear. I mean, part of my expression, but I mean, even in church, it's like if you don't hurry up and cross over, you know what I'm saying? You're going uh -huh. to hell. Oh. I, I'm just being honest. Eugene, you didn't we go there really, now. No, Come on, Eugene. Now. This fear is just He's driven right. throughout okay. our lives. It's pump from when I was a child. Okay, so if you don't go to church today, you know you're going to hell. Okay. Okay, so I'm, I okay. respond to fear. Anything okay. that look like it's going to cause me some fear, I jump. Okay, but what are we afraid of? Well, that's, the, that's where the racial dynamic that's comes in, but it's, it's also fear across the, the board. If you're a young, quote unquote, thug in the street, mm -hmm. you're still scared. Um, if you talk to individuals that are in criminal activity that's true. and that carry guns, they're scared of somebody taking something from them. Lil Dirk, who's part of the drill music scene in Chicago that's so popular, he said when he was arrested, not in the verse, that I keep those pipes on me, right? Because they, uh, Negroes, <laughs> want to take my uh, bands from it, and right? We, and we know it's probably not Negroes, but well, I, you know I, I mean. appreciate you uh, <laughs> keeping it PC. But you get my point. Yes. And uh, what's the other thing in hip hop? They say what? I'd rather be caught with one than without one. Okay. Right? So it's fear. But on a race, the racism comes in because even going back to the drug trade, you okay. go back 100 years, how did they uh, demonize cocaine? They said that African American males on cocaine were immune to bullets and wanted to run around and break white women. Interesting. So they actually changed the caliber of bullets because they were scared that black men high on coke would just run through bullets and cause all this chaos. Very interesting. Uh, when the Colorado mass shootings happened, gun sales went up. Yeah. So that's just fear, but the race is also intertwined. You know, so it's interesting when you say that because I, I had this conversation a lot about this issue of gun violence. And people say, you know, guns don't kill people. People kill people, right? You've heard that before. Yes, yeah. But the same week that Sandy Hook, the massacre that happened in, in Connecticut with the young children, that same week there was a, a massacre in China, right? Well, I wouldn't even say massacre. There was a person that walked into a school building and stabbed 20 people. And guess how many of them died? Zero, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, people always say, well, it's not the guns, it's the, you know, it's the people. Or yeah. what are we going to do, ban knives or ban cars or right. ban these sorts of things? You're, and I say, okay, but the distinction more. is, is that it's so much easier to kill somebody if you have a gun. Yes. And so how do we once again get back to this question? We know people are afraid. We know people are racist. We know people are sexist. We know that people are crazy, have mental issues. But the bottom line is that in America, it's too easy to get a gun. 
And so what do we do about that? That is really where I want to have this conversation. I've been working with juvenile justice for like the last eight years. I've been in criminal justice for the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I've seen a trend of where there are less juveniles locked up than there were 20 years ago, but we have more murders with juveniles than we had 20 years Interesting ago. Interesting point. So my thing is, why are we slapping these kids on the wrist? These kids are carrying guns. They can get a gun quicker than get a cell phone. Mm -hmm. right? So I see, I've seen more kids with guns than with cell phones. They're walking around wow. afraid of, to walk the streets without a gun mm -hmm. or with a friend that has a gun. But at the same time, nothing's being done to them when they okay. come. Slap them on the wrist, send them home. Okay. And up until they're 18. Then when they get 18, caught with the same gun, so are you? But are now you, they get ten years. So, but are you suggesting it's a setup? So, oh, it's a setup. Okay. The okay. setup, in other words, are you suggesting that they should have more criminal penalties at a younger age? Is that what you suggest? I think if you start, if you start enforcing the, the laws at a younger age, I think we'll eradicate. Whoa, science. whoa, 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 whoa! Wait a second, Eugene. You are you are saying that in a because we just had this conversation this even, even before we started taping. The mamas need to know. Okay. The what? mama know well, there's okay. a gun in the house. Hold her accountable. That's too. fine. We can okay. We can hold the mama accountable and let's put the daddy in there as well. Okay. We throw them all in there. Okay. If he's there. If he's there. But <laughs> here's the point. We know that for a lot of these kids, he's not there, right? That's and so, is the further criminalization of these kids the way out of this problem, or are there other solutions to this? Personally, I think we need to. Not necessarily widening that, mm -hmm. but closing that and focus just on gun violence because it, all the statistics show that crime is down, right? But 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 gun but murder rate is steady going up. Okay. I don't understand that. Okay. But the crime is down, but the murder rate is is going through the roof. The people carrying the guns are accidentally shooting people. They none of them going to the range. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, they are the not good, good, good They're shots. not good shots. Right. Uh huh. We need to stop enforcing the laws that are already in the books. And if we have to include parents, then that might need to happen. Because mama know that boy got a gun. Okay. Well, okay, so, so maybe it's the parental uh, well, piece as well. It's, it's, it's much deeper than that, too, okay. because you mentioned that more than young people you deal with, can, they can get a gun before they can, yes, more than have a gun than a cell phone. More? I believe the problem is that more can get a gun before they can find a job, hmm, right? Interesting. Um, the problem on a macro level is poverty, right? Hmm. There's no job opportunities. If you find young men that can work or have middle class parents or households or okay. stable households, they're not, there could be guns in the, in the environment, but they don't need them, right? I agree sure. with that. So I they're getting guns because of their lifestyle and their lifestyle is determined by economics, Poverty, unemployment, all these things okay. are playing into it. Okay. Even unstable households. Okay. So the root of this all is poverty. Now, now I can't argue with you on that because that is exactly true. Because the bottom line is my kids look at guns like the ATM cards. Mm -hmm. When they bought a thumper. Yeah. Yeah. When okay. they get groceries. Yeah. Okay. I've, I've seen that yeah. several times. Now, now, there's so many issues happening here. Let's separate them. So on in terms of the gun violence for young people, specifically, mm -hmm. we're definitely talking about an issue of poverty, right? Absolutely. Yes. But let me throw this out as well. Even in the communities that are not poor in this country, do you realize that there are 19,000 suicides every year by handgun in this country? And those are not just coming from poor areas. So we've got, on the one hand, we have the issue of handgun violence in poor communities. But on the other hand, even Americans who are not poor are dealing with this issue because they have easy access to guns and there are more people that kill themselves from guns than that kill each other. Yeah, that may be true, but if, they, if there wasn't a gun there, they'd slit the wrist. No, they wouldn't. That's sound No, they would not. Not to sound crazy, but oh, they wouldn't. Are you kidding? I'm dead they serious. Find, if you want to kill yourself, you'll find another way. No, they won't. You, you know why? You can building, you can do all kinds Dr. of things. Dr. Davis, I just <laughs> agree with you 100% on that. A gun is just a way to a, do it. An easier take, way to yeah, do it. Just, another you, way. But if you're taking your own life, there's a part of you that has a level of cowardice, I would imagine, yes, right? Yes, So are you really going to go and take a knife and try to figure out how to stab yourself 30 no, times you, and kill you yourself? You can take pills. There's a million. Uh, listen, if someone, most people, by the way, that are quote unquote suicidal, don't have the, the guts to actually go through sure, with it. Sure. So once you reach that level to actually pull the trigger, once you have you'll a plan. find another way. Then yeah, once you have yeah, a plan, you're not once you got a plan. Oh okay. God, yeah, All right. Yeah, okay. All right. I, you know, I'll they'll concede find, that to you. Find another I'll, I'll let you have that one because I'm about to get you on this one. Okay. <laughs> so think about this, right? So the other thing I hear people say all the time is it's, it's, you know, well, the good people with the guns, you don't have to worry about them because the problem is not them, it's all these other bad people with the, you know, with the bad guns. Unregistered guns. guns. Right. But here's the thing, check this out. Do you realize that 80% of the guns that, that are in the city of Chicago that are found, the police find, and all these crimes, whatever, are coming from out of state, right? Yeah. So what's happening is, is you find that 
this is what's happening. Guns are coming in Chicago bought from these gun shows, right? You can buy, you can go into a gun show, you can go in without a uh, FOID card, you can just kind of walk in there and buy a gun. People buy, they call it straw buy, they buy a bunch of them, bring them back to Chicago, places like that, they sell them on the streets. And so, for me, I've always thought, what's the point of having gun laws in Chicago if there are no gun laws in Indiana? Exactly. It's just, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's a joke, right? It is, it is. It is a joke. Exactly. But my, my, my thing is, is that our kids are being kicked out of schools. Our schools are being shut down. Kids are being transported from one area to another area. So there is a fear factor. Mm -hmm. You know, if kids got to go from All Girl Gardens to Finger in Roseland, he's going to feel safer with a gun. Mm -hmm. And now he's got this gun, now he's got all this air in his chest, and now he dare you to say something to him. That's true. And so now, in other words, it's, this thing, it really is political. It, it gets political to the point to where public schools are being um, used mm -hmm. to tear up neighborhoods. You know, you shut down a school in a neighborhood, now the property value in that neighborhood is going down. Mm -hmm. Now you got to bounce kids from one neighborhood to another neighborhood, that's going to create another problem with gangs. And then you shut the school down for poor performance, but nobody's performing because nobody's going to school. That's okay. And so then you come back two years later with a charter school. Who has invested in these charter schools? Ah. Who's invested in these privately run prisons? Who's invested? And this is a movement across the state. You have to wonder, across the country, why would billionaires want to run for public office? Because they're in, they have investments in private education, in private in charter schools and in private prisons. Okay, so you, 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 you're going to a whole other level here, right? And that's the level <laughs> it needs to be at, okay. because the people that are, the people that, 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 that we're screaming uh, 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 um, Black Lives Matter to, sure. don't care about lives, they care about the bottom line. Hmm. And if we really are going to, if we really are serious about stopping this, we have to hit them where it hurts, that's their pocket. Interesting, interesting point. Okay, so you think there's a bigger issue. Uh, you think this is not just about guns, but you believe that there are a lot larger issues at stake. Talk to me about that. I'm, I'm, I'm really kind of upset about certain things because I'm looking at how we vote. And I'm looking at how, looking at the people that are running for office. Okay. Billionaires running for office. Billionaires running for office that have interest in school systems, mm -hmm. starting charter schools. Um, Billionaires that have uh, have interest in privately run prisons, okay, privately run prisons that create little to no cost labor, almost free labor. There's more being locked up and available for cheap labor now than it was in slavery. We got 2.2 million men locked up in prison now. Slavery at its high point with 10 million slaves only had a million hmm. men. So we got men working, making computers, phones, televisions for little or nothing. And you get these people in office, they change the laws. There are stiffer laws written now. Now guys are getting longer time. Why? Because they're getting money from federal funds to run this prison. This prison is on the stock market. Interesting. So so you think this, this gun violence question, and, and, and I've read this, and I think you bring up a very, very good point. The gun violence question is a larger, uh, connected to a larger issue of the prison industrial complex. Exactly. And how people are making money off of people being incarcerated. It's interesting because uh, I teach political science and my students, we talk about a couple of amendments. We talk about the Second Amendment, which we're going to get into in a mm -hmm. second. We talk about the Thirteenth Amendment, which says that slavery actually is still legal Absolutely. if you are convicted of a crime. So you're, you're suggesting this is all connected. This is all, in other words, this is just a modern day slavery. There's, there are actually theories. Um, I've had students write papers on pipeline from school to prison, Interesting. foster care to prison. In other words, seven out of 10 kids, seven out of 10 boys in foster care end up in the prison system. And so what's, we have families splitting up. There are no more nucleus families. You know, When I got married, it was seven out of 10 marriages stayed. Now it's less than four out of 10 married, people stay married. You have these boys in these homes, their moms are telling me they're the man of the house, they're scared, they're carrying guns. You put these guns in the neighborhood, right. that makes guys feel bigger about themselves. Okay. And if they're broke, they will use that. That gun talks to them. Okay. Let's move to the Second Amendment, all right? So a lot of people say, well, that's all fine and dandy, what you're saying about the prison industrial complex and about the number of guns. But the reality is that America has a guaranteed right to bear arms. Now, I have always thought that if you look back in the context of the Second Amendment, you will see that that right is explicitly linked to the uh, need for a militia, right? And so I always make the case that 
Uh, when the founding fathers wrote this, there was no standing army in the country. Uh, and there was a lot of instability. And so in that way, people were saying, yes, you need a gun so you could be called upon by your state government to execute the laws, uh, suppress insurrection, and repel invasions is what the Constitution actually says. Right. So I want to know from you all, do you think that uh, people should have the right to carry their weapons? The, concept, the Supreme Court just recently ruled that we should have an individual, not a collective right. Do you think the country is safer with more people carrying guns? Yeah. Again, it's, in my opinion, it's not the gun, right? It's the um, circumstances around the person with the gun that, or that create the desire for a person to go get a gun. wouldn't be a problem. Okay, but what happens when that gun is used accidentally? You know, their guns are used more often in homes mm -hmm. accidentally yeah. uh, to hurt someone than right. they are to defend an intruder. And I hear yeah. you, by the way. I have a family. Yeah. I feel the same way. However, you know, that line between, you know, there's an old saying that says a thin line between love and hate. Yeah. I think it's a thin line between genius and sanity. That's right. And that sort of person, and, and there's just a thin line between being normal and being crazy yeah. oftentimes, right? Yeah. So what if you, Dr. Davis, mm -hmm. okay, you're a sensible guy. Mm -hmm. What if somebody ticks you off someday, right? Let's just say, right? And so let's say you have a rough series of events that happens. Mm -hmm. You got a handgun, mm -hmm. and you're in a situation where you, if you didn't have a handgun, you obviously wouldn't use it. Mm -hmm. But let's say you get in a situation, what happens to the normal person who has a gun in their hand mm -hmm. under challenging circumstances? Under challenging circumstances, I still don't think people will just unnecessarily use a weapon. Yeah, and see, that's why I got to argue with you. There. Okay. Because there's a thing called a crime of passion. Whereas if you thought someone was sitting on your wife, you might just ask them to leave. With a gun, a gun, it's easy to make him leave. You might, yeah. Somebody bother your daughter or your niece. Man, I invited you over the house and now you, you 35 years old hitting on my 16 year old niece. Now it's a whole nother thing. And so having the gun makes it a lot, in other words, it gives you room for crazy. But we can't eliminate all possibilities of Why? something bad happening in any situation. In Why? Life. If you don't have a gun, you just beat them up. That's like saying... I'd rather beat up than dead. Yeah. yeah. But it's still your ultimate choice of whether or not you pull that trigger or go grab a gun or if you fight. Yeah. It's still up to that person's individual decision yeah. to make a good decision or a bad decision. We got people getting shot on the highway. You can't drive down a canyon, down Bishop Ford or Dan Ryan. Mm -hmm. You flip somebody the finger because people are drinking coffee by the by, by twenty-four ounces. <laughs> so people actually, so it's, it's not the guns; it's coffee. That's what. You're <laughs> no, no, no. Because yeah, I mean, if we, if we, we ban coffee. Out, if we stress this out. <laughs> yeah. Diet plays a big part in what okay. we do. Okay. Well, All right. Yeah. So you're serious about that? I'm, point. Saying, I'm very serious, but I've, I've, I've asked my students to reduce the the. the um, High, you know, the, the red dyes in their food. Sure, sure, sure. I've I, I asked my students to, to have their students, you know, mm -hmm. to watch the high fructose corn syrup because you get these kids four and five years old hyped up on sugar. Okay. Then about five or six there, they're diagnosed with ADHD. Okay. 90% of the people with, um, diagnosed with this are being misdiagnosed and they're people of color. Yeah, I love the misdiagnosis. Dr. Davis, what is your, uh, your uh, acronym for ADHD? Oh yeah, I was just quoting uh, I'm Dr. Quoting Mark the same Johnson. person. Yeah, uh -huh. we were talking about it earlier. Uh, ain't no daddy at home. Ain't no daddy at home. Right? Right. Yeah. Uh, that was a beautiful thing that he stated because it's yeah. true, yeah. right? Yeah. And the statistics support it. Yeah. Right? Most of the children that are diagnosed with that or that end up having other issues educationally or in the okay. justice system, they trace it back, they didn't have a father at home. Okay, so fine. Let's, okay, so, and, and all those are real. And you guys are giving me like five more show topics. That <laughs> <about it>. Okay, <laughs> and that's cool. But back to this crime of passion. Yeah. Back to you, normal, got a job, yeah. I'm trained, got yeah. an FOID card, yeah. Yeah. I'm walking down the street. Mm -hmm. Someone does something that I find to be uh, intolerable mm -hmm. towards a family member of mine, maybe not life threatening, but intolerable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do I pull out my gun? Well, let me first say, I'm also, I, I think there's so many guns on the street too, okay. by the way. So I'm not just saying I'm pro gun. There should be a okay. million guns. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying those situations are rare, mm -hmm. first of all, and we can't account for every possible rare situation that may arise. As a rule, normal, sensible people that aren't in a position or in a circumstance where they have to go kill somebody or rob somebody will not use that gun in, a, in, a, in, in the wrong fashion. Okay, so let me ask something to you, though. 
Okay, we, we've, we've, we've all heard of post-traumatic stress disorder. Well. Yeah. I'm proposing that we are right now, these, all of us are exposed to chronic stress. Absolutely. So chronically we're being uh, um, exposed to stress. Mm -hmm. It will exacerbate our nerves. It'll make, our, it'll make us that much less tolerable. Mm -hmm. all right? So now you drink all the Kool-Aid, I might want to shoot you. You eat all the food. No, we're talking real. Well, that's I have, true. I have kids come to the car holding their cereal because they can't leave the cereal. It's 6 o'clock at night. You still eating cereal at 6 o'clock at night? Mm -hmm. You don't have nothing else to eat. Mm -hmm. And I've got to bring it with me because somebody might eat it. So we, we, not, we don't know the level of poor that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. The level of poor. So to say having more guns will make us safe? No. No, no, I'm not okay. saying that. Okay. No, no, I'm, I'm, I, well, I'm, 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 no, I'm not Yes, that. And, and unfortunately, you, you didn't say that. Yeah, no, although it would have been that. fun if you had, because no, no, I would have gotten, no. gotten to get Definitely. you a little better. But, yeah. <laughs> but, but here's the deal, guys. Um, unfortunately, we're out of time today. Uh, and I don't think that we are going to solve this problem like this. But if you could just, uh, in just a, a sentence or two, uh, give our viewers uh, just an idea of what a solution might be as we wrap up. So if you could, if you could come down to one solution, what would you do, Professor Mahal? My first, the first thing I would say is there was the, the powers that be. Are a lot of them are part of one percent. They are the billionaires. They're the money makers, and they also influence lawmakers. And they also invested in prison systems, and they invested in the charter school system. I'm saying stop making them rich. Okay. Don't shop. Uh, on Black Friday. Don't buy state lottery tickets. In other words, these lottery tickets are supposed to be helping the school system, but they're shutting down. Gotcha. All right, so let's stop spending money with these people. Let's, they feel, see, they don't hear Black Lives Don't Matter. What they hear is 11% drop in sales on Black Friday. Okay. 20%. Now you'll get their attention. Okay. Dr. Davis. Um, my response is a macro level solution and then a micro level. On a macro level, uh, we need to start working on allowing people to have gainful employment or okay. uh, stable jobs and having the opportunity to have stable households, right? Okay. On a micro level, we need to control the neighborhoods. How do you do that? Besides just saying we need to control the neighborhoods. People in these neighborhoods where all this killing and shooting is taking place, take initiative, pass out flyers, have a group meeting, organize, okay. um, start doing recreational activities okay. with others in the community. When you have a more close-knit community, neighborhood watches even, that actually function and are organized and meet with each other and hold each okay. other accountable. Those types of things can help control the neighborhood and let people know, I will call the police if I see something. If there's a shooting, we're gonna call, we're not scared. Very good, well said. Well, I thank you guys for joining us today and I thank you for watching also. Gun violence is a real issue, but I believe it's up to all of us individually to push peace. I think peace is possible, but it won't happen unless each one of us gets involved. Remember, change starts with you. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Ted Williams.
think about the future of our babies, yeah. With all the killing happening daily on our city streets. You ain't supposed to cry, baby, dry your eyes. Just another one of those black lives. What's going on with our sensibility to civil tea? If I had a religion, it would probably be a love song in the distance or melody. If I had one request, soon after I'm gone, I ask my creator, turn the radio on, turn the radio One.